So far in this course, we've studied instruments whose tone production evolved from simple embedded mouthpieces to exposed embouchures. The clarinet is the only instrument in the concert wind section to retain an older, simpler mouthpiece design. The clarinet's beak, since it's impossible to evolve any further, has instead been perfected to its most optimum shape. This is most evident when we look at its reed, where serious double reed players train themselves for years to make their own personalized reeds, a clarinetist can simply buy their reeds in a packet, fix one of them to the beak, moisten it slightly, and then play. This simplicity is actually part of the clarinet's character. The single reed vibrating against the beak allows for extremely subtle nuances of tone and projection. This is the reason why clarinets can start and end tones in a true niente, play subtones, and yet play out with extreme ferocity when needed. There's an additional implication to single reed tone production, a unique flavor of articulation. The clarinet's attack isn't breathy like the flute, or pinpoint precise like the oboe and bassoon. It can be incisive enough when needed, of course, but its natural articulation style is more subtle than the double reeds. That's a positive difference, not a shortcoming, lending the clarinet a naturally flowing style in legato passages. Another essential part of the clarinet's character is its ease of technical range. The keywork of the naturally virtuosic flute has been adapted to the modern clarinet, making every pitch of its very wide fundamental register easily accessible, and the transition to the clarino register a simple matter. The result is that the clarinet is nearly equal to the flute in technical brilliance. The clarinet's easy virtuosity is so often overlooked by developing orchestrators that it's almost a given that a composer's first orchestral efforts will include little of interest for experienced players. And yet the tradition of standout clarinet solos goes all the way back to its serious introduction into the orchestral complement in the classical period. Mozart and Haydn were the first to see its uses, and composers like Beethoven and Schubert built on their approach. Romantic-era composers, from Weber to Rimsky-Korsakov, considered the clarinet to be the nightingale of the orchestra. In the Orchestration 102, the wind section course, I pointed out that clarinets didn't use vibrato in their normal approach to playing concert music. This is also an essential part of the clarinet character that takes a while for student composers to grasp. We normally associate expressiveness in string instruments, not to mention flutes, oboes, and bassoons, with an increase in vibrato as part of the exaggeration of dynamic elements. But clarinets have a different type of espressivo playing, a sweetness of sustained tone, along with a heightened sense of nuance. It really helps the player when dynamics are clearly and thoroughly marked in a solo part. <laughs> Thank you. 
These aspects of the clarinet's character are fundamental to its orchestral role. Let's find out why in the next video.